Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me on Berets. This time we're doing a bit of a global video for Global is about to get a brand new banner. And uh, let me tell you something, I'm looking forward to not doing any polls right now. I'm really excited that I'm not the one who has to do polls this time. Hopefully my uh, recent videos have enlightened some of you as to what can happen when you are pulling in this game. But hey, for everybody who's being smug about Brave Exvius, enjoy Neo Visions. Yeah, I went there. Anyway, uh, switching gears back to War of the Visions, uh, both Global and JP look like they are getting a raid actually on the same day. Uh, just to quickly briefly talk about uh, when it comes to guilds or raids sorry guilds is a different thing for another day but anyway talking about raids really quickly um, JP is going to be getting a king behemoth raid and what is important about this raid is for anybody who has gotten Laswell uh, or basically has anyone who can use a katana like uh, high level Rob here from this event, uh, from doing the raid, probably you're going to need to get to level 80, if I had to guess, or level 40, but uh, level 100 to really get it maxed out, at the very least. Uh, you will get Laswell's um, Purple Lightning, uh, which is his kind of signature weapon, so uh, that's going to be a thing. But uh, Global, on the other hand, looks like they will be getting a raid around the same day, and most people have seemed to have guessed that it's going to be a Earth Raid, and I would probably agree with that. It's either going to be like Earth or Darkness, but it will definitely be weak to probably Missiles and Wind, whatever it ends up being. Hence the Earth element. But anyway, uh, when it comes to raids, uh, early on on the JP side it was found a little bit annoying. Some of the raids were very difficult for being a uh, Uni-type uh, weaknesses, or at least that's kind of what I remember. It was a little difficult to do back then. Uh, but there's usually a couple damage types that do well in a raid. So for the flans, it is going to be very much about um, doing wind elemental damage, obviously to highlight a key new character like Lucia, who is coming to global right away. And the secondary thing is um, magic, which probably means that, you know, Medina is going to be really good in this fight. Um, Ayaka also potentially will be pretty damn strong because she could potentially heal up characters or just use Holy, Meteor, Comet. I mean, you may not be able to allow her AI to do it, but there you go. Also, for Globalers right now, I think it's worth uh, bringing up that this vision card for you uh, which is the New Year's Vision card from JP side, is a bonus and an advantage here because it does have Aquatic Killer, which is basically the type that Flans are classified as. So bringing this in will just be generally really good because you'll be able to do more damage. It is a Mage type card, so works well with Medinia. Other than that, uh, the new Tetra Selfie card, which obviously comes with Tetra, um, yeah, that will help power up win for someone like um, Lucia, so there you go. By the way, I do know that Global changed the name ever so slightly for Lucia. I don't care, I'm still calling her Lucia till the end of time. So now, let's talk about characters, because we're going to have to just get into talking about Lucia. What is her strengths? What are her advantages? I've heard that uh, there is some evidence to say that uh, Global's Lucio will be a little bit different from JP's, which until mm, she's in the game and finalized, I'm not going to put too much stock into that of whether it's true or not, but uh, Lucia is a, a one of three option, and I've talked about this before in other videos, but in case people are coming here just specifically for Lucy information. Lucia is like one of your three options. Obviously, her range options make her really good for PvP. Um, I, I would definitely put her probably a little bit more of an advantage of PvP from what I've seen, just because of the range, the different gaining in height, the little bit of getting by defenses on the JP side. 
She ends up being really good for that reason. She also, as a wind element, has a distinct advantage against Mons, and Mons are still kind of used in mass, because other than Engelbert, which not everybody has, everybody does have a Mont, and that makes uh, her really good. You can also pair her up with uh, Frederica and have a more gunner-based team that uh, can shoot down your opponents before they get close to you. Uh, it should be noted if you get really close, that's when a little bit of a problem comes up. But Lucia is generally really, really strong, and uh, she just all around has pretty good stats. She's a great damage dealer. Uh, just for globalers, you're kind of looking at getting it to this point where you sh this should be a decision moment. Because uh, Lucia is one of the first really big characters to come in the next little bit to the game. Uh, first of all, Lucia is here, but shortly after, Kryle and Venera show up. Kryle, who's an Earth Element Mage, obviously uh, Lucia ends up losing to this girl a little bit because particularly... Or, sorry, the other way around. Um, Kryle loses to Lucia because she's a Earth Elemental. Um, Wind has a distinct advantage here. But overall, like, Kryle is uh, really, really good. Uh, much better at dealing uh, with some AoE attacks uh, against multiple enemies. Not only that, uh, she can get around Evasion, which makes her just really good. And the uh, sub-job of White Mage uh, can never be understated how good it is uh, because you're just having the option of a strong damage dealer and a healer all in one. Pretty nice convenience. So it also gives her the oldie spell. So that's your second option, and your third option is Venera. Uh, Venera, who is an incredibly fast. Uh, my Venera on my teams with the agility with an agility card can get well over. Uh, a, uh, or sorry, getting with my agility set up on her. Uh, she has over 100 agility. She's incredibly fast. She has double gunner as well. So she kind of has an option for range too in terms of like gunner. It's just. Fred, or Lucia and Frederica, who have Hunter, have kind of more of a distinct advantage when it comes to height differences. But you really need to decide which of these three. I feel like these three is an optional choice, but you shouldn't really pass up on all three of them. Uh, they are just three of the more influential characters in the game. And they all have their distinct advantages. Like I said, Lucia can deal with a lot of Earth Elementals. She has really good range on her. And she is a potential future, like, just counter to Kryle. Kryle is good against all evasion units that will basically come in the future. And not only that, she has great AoE. She's great for PvP and PvE content. I would say more so, in my opinion, than Lucia is. And besides, you don't always need to fight teams with Lucia, so that kind of makes me like Kryle a little bit more. Also, if you missed Ayaka, Kryle can definitely do the healer thing. So that is a point. Other than uh, Ayaka's limit burst, which is still far and away number one. And the last is Venera, and Venera as a dark elemental, kind of dodgy, fast character with defense piercing uh, is one of my more higher recommendations. Uh, she is just absolutely been almost essential for me to get further in this game just because she her defense piercing has been good in multiple events. Uh, she can potentially die fairly easily to an enemy that just has accuracy, but she is a potential future counter to Warrior of Light, and how, like, Warrior of Light is definitely, I feel like, on a ton of global people's radars. But, circling back around to talk about Lucia is the fact that her banner is very well comprised for her. And not only that, if you've already kind of committed to Frederica, the banner is even kind of more important because of Tetra Selfied. Tetra Selfied is by far and away the best for projectiles. There are, is no other summon that comes close to her. She is just really, really, really good. Uh, she will power up your gunners 
uh, works incredibly well with Lucia, and that's kind of a really big strength of a banner. If you have a banner where you have a summon that just goes really nicely with the character, that upright, barring my more recent video, is usually enough to get you just a solid combination. Uh, in other words, if you were to go hard on this banner and get either multiple copies of Lucia or multiple copies of Tetra Selfie before you got both of them, that's not a terrible thing. The Tetra Selfies card is very good for Lucia, and um, otherwise just getting more shards for Lucia, if that's going to be one of your primary characters you're building, is really good. But yeah, you kind of got to think Team Synergy. If you went with Frederica, you're probably going for Lucia. The banner is, I would say, an absolutely you must pull on it kind of thing if you're just going the gunner route uh, because Tetra is too valuable and Lucia will pair up pretty damn nicely with Frederica. And that's an arena team right there, minus the third unit of your choosing, which is probably a tank. Let's be honest, it's probably Warrior of Light. So yeah. Uh, the raids aside, I um, think that the banner is absolutely fantastic. Um, let me know, are you going for Lucia? Will you be waiting for a one of the future options, Trial or um, Venera, or are you saving for Glaciella? Which is another video that I'm going to make shortly after this. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it helpful. And um, see you in the next one. Take care.